Okay, as you can see by now, I'm guessing that the difficulty level has turned up a bit but we're still going to carry on and I hope you persevere with me so we can understand the mystery between these vector fields and everything that's associated with it. Okay, just to summarize the previous lesson, we've always been dealing with gx, the vector g of a parameter x and then this is, you know, gives us a vector, okay, and x sometimes you call it parameter or what. And then now we have shift to the same vector g and it's written in x and y. Okay, if you read a lot of books, they will use a lot of terms. So I'm just going to tell you a few terms so that you get familiar with it. Okay, this is what we call a vector function of a single variable. Okay, this is called a vector function of multiple variables or a vector function with vector variables. Okay, as long as it's multi-variable or vector variables, you're just dealing with more than one. Okay, and then later we move on to one which is something like that. We combine these two concepts, we just name it f, and we'll just put x, y, and z, and it's gonna give us function one in x, y, and z, the i component, plus function two, x, in x, y, and z of the j component, and function three of x, y, and z for the k component. And we realize that we can't sketch this curve Instead, it's a three-dimensional hyperspace in the R4, sorry, a three-dimensional hypersurface in the R4 space. Okay, I hope that I mentioned hypersurface in the previous video, but never mind. So this is what we have, and we can't sketch this. Okay, so now having said that, we need to now give some sort of interpretation of what this really means. Okay, vector field, okay, and it's like, like I said, you give me the point, I give you a vector. So certain points in the space there's a certain vector, okay? So let's just draw a space. We're not gonna sketch it out, but we're gonna draw a space so that we can at least get what we are talking about, okay? Z over here. Now, this is a space. So for each point, this generates a vector, okay? This vector would be a tangent to a curve, okay? Because every point is a vector, and obviously there's a curve that goes through all those points. And the curve, it's called streamlines, flows, flow lines, or lines of force, depending on the context. Okay, so what that means, streamlines. Streamlines is used in the context of, let's just say, water. So water is flowing from here, okay, to here. Okay, and it goes like that. Okay, now I, I'm not too good with my physics, though I got an A, but I'm not a physics Olympian winner, but we are able to isolate this water into small little particles, okay? And it follows the particles or a certain particle from here to here will follow what we call a streamline like this. A streamline like that. And the streamline can be identified in the x, y, plane, in the x, y, z plane. Am I not wrong? x, y, and z plane. So, you give me the point the x, y, z point, you put the value inside here and then I'll give you the vector. In this context, this vector is called the velocity vector, which is the velocity or the direction and the speed in which that particle is traveling at that point of time, okay? And this, let's just point it as this. So it only would make sense that this vector would be a tangent to the curve or to the streamline curve. Okay. Now I know that we are moving really into the realm of theoretical physics or theoretical mathematics. I really don't know which one is it, maybe a bit of both. Because right now at a high school level, it's a bit difficult to really envision or as a freshman level to envision what this thing really means. Okay. But let's just take it as that. We break down a flow of water into small little points and that point is inside the space. And for each point has an x, y, and z coordinate, and then we can find an associated vector from the vector field, okay, the vector field, which would give us the velocity vector, and that is the vector in which the point is going to travel instantaneously at that point, which from here, it is a tangent to the curve, and this is called streamlines, okay. Streamlines because it's water. Now, a more general term, we would always like to use the term lines of force. Other situations where this might happen may be in a magnetic field or even a gravitational field, okay, where we're dealing with three-dimensional space. But obviously, we need a high level of interpretation for that. 
But let's just say lines of force. So we are back to answer this question. If we have the vector field, which we definitely certainly can't sketch out, and the vector field gives us the velocity vector or the tangential vector, so to speak, of a certain curve, okay? A certain curve, a certain lines of force. We obviously want to know, or we at least want to try to find from the velocity vector, how we get to the lines of force. Okay, I repeat again. We got the, the vector field, which gives us a vector at each point. Now we want to find the lines of force that travels over here. Now, if your calculus is good, okay, you might suspect it's, it's, this is the funny part because the vector field is just one here like that. However, the lines of force, as I said, is not limited to this line, but it's limited to another line here and another line here or another line here. So it may seem to me that there are really infinite amount of lines of force in the whole space. Well, if you're thinking along those lines, you are certainly correct. Okay, and I'll show in the previous example how we all really expound on why there are infinite amount of lines of force. But for now, let's see whether we can go from the vector field to the lines of force. Okay, and this is how we do it. Okay, the given vector field is over there like that, right? The vector field, we just use three-dimensional um, three dimensional space for now. Okay. Now, I will just sketch it over here since there's a space over here, no pun intended. This is the curve, and this means that we got a point over here, it gives us the tangential vector. The tangential, yeah, tangential vector. Actually, it's a velocity vector, but it's tangential to the curve. Okay, so for now, let's just assume we know the equation of the curve here like that. And we define it parametrically, okay? Parametrically, which is x, a function of x, let's just put t, not, not to be confused with time, this is just a parametric equation, y equals to yt and z equals to zt. Now why we need to use parametric equations, well that's the only way it can be done, but later you can see that it's independent to the parameter.